Now that we have programmed some queue lists, I would like to show you how easy it is to export them onto a Butler XT and a Glass Touch and how to configure them. In order to configure a Butler XT and a Glass Touch, please click onto the Device Manager icon in the top icon bar. Please make sure that the IP address setting of your PC and the Butler XT have been correctly configured by taking a look at the simple programming tutorial. In order to get a Butler XT and a Glass Touch online, you must click onto the Wizard icon in the Device Manager. Once you have clicked onto the Wizard, you can see that it has found a Butler XT inside of the network. The Wizard asks if it should be continuing to scan for eBus devices, and you can set the start universe for new DMX drivers. Just click the OK button, and the Wizard will scan the eBus. Please keep in mind that the maximum of devices on one eBus is 8 pieces. Now that it has found the Glass Touch T6R, we can click the OK button and both the Butler XT and the Glass Touch T6R are online. If you are using several Glass Touch devices in one eBus, you might want to know which one is which, and therefore you can click onto the Blink and Beep button to make one single Glass Touch blink and beep so you can easily identify it. In order to configure the buttons and the wheel of the Glass Touch T6R, Simply double click it and you can enable or disable the driver. You can enable or disable the private logbook in the logbook tab in the top window. You can check the alias name, you can leave a comment and you can set the gateway alias name. The gateway alias name must be the name of the Butler XT where the eBus device is attached to. You can also enable or disable the keyboard beep with the checkbox. In order to configure the wheel, or any of the buttons for the online mode, click onto the online mode tab and then on any of the keys or the wheel to set the function for it. For example, if you click onto the jog dial, you can choose which versatile master or Oculus submaster you would like to control with the wheel. If you would like to control versatile master number one, simply just choose the type versatile master and set the index to number one. For connecting an action to any of the buttons, just click onto the button itself and choose the action. For example, to start and stop cue list number one. For configuring the standalone mode of the Glass Touch T6R, just click onto the standalone mode tab and then on the function that you would like to bind to a function of the Butler XT in standalone mode, such as dimming the output number one, output number two, both outputs or the currently selected output. In order to configure the functionality of the buttons, simply just choose out of the actions that are available for the Butler XT standalone mode, such as play cue lists, toggle play cue lists, and much more. The intensity up down features are very special because the Butler XT allows dimming in standalone mode. In order to play a cue list in standalone mode, just choose which cue list you would like to play on the DMX output number one and DMX output number two. And as soon as you press the button, these two cue lists will be played through the two outputs. Please keep in mind that if you export, for example, cue list number 4 and 5 out of the programmer into the internal memory of the Butler XT, they will be renumbered to cue lists number 1 and 2. So make sure your mapping fits. Now that we know, we can also configure all kind of other buttons on the Glass Touch device. Simply just choose an action and set the parameters that you would like to be replayed in standalone mode. Configuring the Butler XT is also quite easy. Once you double click onto the Butler XT, you can find all kind of different tabs like the online mode and you can configure the buttons and the dry contact closure inputs and set their actions in online mode by just clicking on them to set a on press or on release action which means closing or opening the contact. This works almost the same for the standalone mode. Just click onto the buttons or the dry contact closure inputs and you can choose out of any Butler XT standalone mode action, both for on press or on release. The standalone mode trigger list is completely independent from the programmer's automation trigger list. So all the Butler XT triggers get set inside of the trigger rule of the device properties of the Butler XT. Just choose any kind of trigger, for example a time event, 
where you can choose the hour and the minute when an action should be executed. You can choose on which weekday the action should be executed and also just set it to a certain day or month that should be used for the action. Inside of the Action tab, just choose out of the Butler XT standalone actions, such as playing queue lists, so you can also play two independent queue lists out of the two DMX outputs of the Butler. You can also set many more triggers, like what should be happening when the Butler starts up, on the end of a queue list, on the exit of online mode, or on any Sunrise Timer event, which is based on the internal clock of the Butler XT. Now that we have set up the Glass Touch and the Butler XT, and we have programmed our queue lists inside of the programmer, we would like to export some queue lists and the Glass Touch and the Butler XT settings onto the Butler XT, and therefore just click onto the Export Show to Device icon. Choose the target device and also choose the queue lists you would like to export from 1 to 2 in this example. In the Butler Export tab, you can also choose if the complete release on end or auto continuous loop optimization should be checked. You can also export them to a file. So you can export the file as a BSF for the Butler XT or a BRP for the normal Butler. Please don't mix them up. For now, I would just like to directly export it to the device. Click OK and the export will be done for maximum 10 devices at once. And that's it.